Museum Gardens. During the summer, here they're full of ice creams and picnics, lovers and families alike. And the backdrop to it all is a treasure trove of history. In fact, the gardens here have a unique way of blending history with nature. Our city is full of buildings today, from the majestic York Minster to the quaint Barley Hall, from the Harry Potter-esque Leans of the Shambles to my little house of Poppleton Road. But what I want to know is what is the oldest thing that was built to last? The oldest building here to this day. And it's this, what you are looking at is almost 2,000 years old, the Roman Wall. When the Romans set up camp here, the first thing they would have done was build a turf defence around the city. Literally they would have dug a trench and thrown all of the excavated material inwards to form a rampart. Probably they would have added some timber parts on top as well. Around the year 100 AD, they built the first stone wall around the city. Part of that original Roman wall stands here. As you can imagine, as you go around the city today, the wall has all but crumbled and disappeared. So this is the best surviving example here in York of that Roman wall. It's important as well not to get confused with the walls that people walk around the city today, they're later, they're 13th century, although some of those walls do follow the path that the Roman walls would have taken in some of the places. They're just above and to the side. The stones tend to be short and squarish. Um, the Romans had a preference for headers rather than stretchers, so they tend to go back into the wall rather than coming along like this. Um, so short and squarish, at the back they tend to be narrowed off a bit to help them fit in and here at the front you can see that they've generally been kind of squared off, nothing uh, irregular or sticky out at the front. You can see that in some places they've mixed the mortar here with little stones in between where it's more exposed or where they needed greater strength to piece it together. Note also that they've added this decorative brick layer to help bond it. These stone walls would have been around four to five metres high, backed up by a four metre broad earth rampart, and then there would have been a wall walk on top. Not quite as nice as walking the walls today, I'm sure. You can see here where a stray cannonball penetrated the wall in the English Civil War, and it's been patched up. 1600s Charles I era. Amazingly this is the only recorded damage of the Roman wall ever. As far as we know, for all of the Roman period it stayed strong and impenetrable. The blend between history and nature has long been a part of the museum gardens. What better place to talk about it than here? Box and Rome. I'm sure there would have been foxes living naturally alongside the Romans. I'm told the museum garden still has its own resident fox today. But there were more unusual animals living there in the gardens in Victorian times. One of my favourite Wikipedia quotes is um, on the gardens they say that during the 1830s it had its own conservatory, its own pond, and its own menagerie, which was destroyed when the bear escaped and briefly had control of the area. In this case, Wikipedia is telling the truth. Okay, so this is a better account 
of what was going on in the museum gardens in the 1830s. This account by historian Anne-Marie Akehurst. A small menagerie was created briefly as an adjunct to the zoological collection. A wild stoat, a swan, a heron, a porpoise and a python were donated. Although it is not known whether they were alive or dead. A golden eagle and several monkeys were known to be live there at some point. She goes on to say, One creature which was very much alive was the zoo's bear, which was soon discovered to be diverting too many resources away from the society. Finally, the bear escaped from its cage and chased John Phillips and William Vernon Harcourt into an outbuilding. In 1831, the bear was offered to London Zoo, where the secretary wrote a letter. I've drafted a copy here, but uh, this is um, definitely not the original letter, um, which resides in Yorkshire Museum. Sirs, we shall feel much pleased in taking your bear on the terms proposed in your letter of the 21st. The best mode I can conceive of forwarding him to us is by one of the York coaches. You booking him on as an outside passenger and promising the guard a recompense on delivering him safe in London. Be so good as to send us a little line to inform us of the coach by which the animal is to travel and the place and probable time of his arrival in town. You will also oblige me by stating to whom we shall pay the price of the animal. We can imagine it's a rather odd sight seeing a bear as an outside passenger on a coach down from York to London. Another little piece of the Roman wall here. Um, this is next to Exhibition Square and opposite the York Theatre Royal. And it's all we have in this part to separate what was inside and outside of the Roman city. The Roman fortress would have been quadrangular, covered about 50 acres and would have been aligned on the points of the compass. Um, initially, inside the wall, he would have had an empty space. This is where they would have caught enemy missiles, would have been empty so that the Romans would have had quick access to the walls and it would have been where they kept the cattle. Behind that was the prayer tenchura. Here was where the strongest part of the legion, where you keep your strongest men. Behind that, in the centre, was the praetorium where they keep the supplies, hospitals, workshops and the like. And then behind that, at the back of the fort, was where you will keep the rest of the legion, um, including probably the mounted cavalry. The mighty Roman legion of 5,000 men all accommodated inside the fortress. He would have served about 25 years as a Roman soldier, then he would have retired and gone to live outside of the walls. The civilian settlement soon grew up the other side of the river. The Romans left in about 410 AD, so they were here in York for around 350 years.